Yo, what's going on everyone? Miles Midori here with the review and recap of All-American Season 5, Episode 17. In the beginning, Spencer's having breakfast with his mom and he's on spring break and he's just glad his life isn't too wild for once. Grace was happy and she said it felt like old times. If you're wondering about Alicia, she came out of the kitchen. I guess she was the one that was cooking. Grace didn't seem like she wanted to eat any of the pancakes that she made. She asked her if she used water instead of milk with the pancakes, and she said she did. She said because it's healthier for Spencer, Grace looked like she didn't want none of that. She passed a little more food to Spencer, and she told her she gonna be sticking with the biscuits. Denise popped up, and once again, it's nice to see this character appear in the show. Grace told her she was early, and Spencer was wondering what was going on. When he went into his bedroom, he was wondering where his bed was at. Spencer almost looked like Will Smith in the last episode of Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Grace told him she wanted to make a craft room and Denise inspired her to get started. Even Alicia jumped in and said it got extra fabric at the dress shop. Spencer wasn't really liking the idea of his room being changed and asked where's he gonna sleep at when he gets back home. Grace said his home is at the beach house, which is true. I mean, they paying rent at that place. She did say he could sleep on a blow up mattress when he gets back to the house. I mean, he got options, at least it's not the couch. Spencer had to head out for a voluntary football practice and you could tell he was over it and Grace seemed like she was sad by his response to it all. I get that he wants to have a room for when he comes back home and she wants to try out different hobbies and she wants to have a room for that. At the Baker's house, Jordan's trying to spend some time with Layla, but she's pretty busy with music-related stuff, and he asked her if she was going to Olivia's award ceremony, but she won't be able to make it. There's a UK artist in town that she's trying to scope out, but she did say she got some flowers for Olivia. Moving along, Laura's checking up on Olivia. She's writing her speech for the award ceremony for if she wins, and you could tell she's nervous. She asked Laura if she could read her speech to her, and she agreed. Laura was wondering what she was looking for, and she said she was getting together her versions one through four of her speech. Laura said she gonna read her all four of them, and she said seven and there are three on her computer. Now you know she nervous and overthinking it. That's too many versions of a speech to read to one person. That's like a class lecture right there. They're gonna be there for hours. Jordan's talking to Laura and she thinks Olivia is spiraling about the whole award ceremony. He said he's sure it's a lot of pressure and it's a big deal for her, so try to give her a little space. Laura told him that she asked for her help and then kicked her out the room after the third note on draft two. She a brave one for lasting that long. Even Jordan asked how many drafts was it and she told him don't ask. Jordan, she's right. It's probably done double since. Since then. Jordan brought up the last time she spoke publicly, it didn't go so well, and maybe she doesn't want to repeat what happened at the eulogy. Laura thought he was right, and he told her he will go check up on her. Jordan goes to go talk to Olivia. She feels like people may think she's a fraud when they realize she's not Jaden Davis. He told her maybe she should take a break from the keyboard. She wasn't trying to hear it. She said she's in her groove and draft eight is solid. So she is making more drafts. Jordan took the laptop and closed it. She mentioned she was working on a segue, but he told her she got two hours to work on it while he's at practice and she's going away with him later. He's not wrong. She needs a break and it's just going to keep bothering her the more she works on it. At GAU, the football team is practicing and Spencer is still a little bothered by his room change. He asked Jordan when he moved, did they change his room? He said Coop lives in his room now. Spencer was like, doesn't that bother him? And he said, nope, it still feels like home. Just then they see Dr. Gutenberg, GAU's president. He was there because him and the boosters heard the team had ex-cons and has-been players and was wondering where Coach Kenny was at. Spencer told him that they're running student-led practices for spring break and Coach Kenny is out in Tennessee recruiting. Gutenberg asked if the rumors are true and Spencer said it is. They had a player who made a mistake, he did his time, and he's getting a second chance. This dude, Gutenberg, said GAU is a prestigious program, not a charity case. Spencer told him that it's not charity and Gutenberg said he wants the top players. The boosters aren't happy, which means he isn't. The boosters are asking questions and if they don't like the answers, he'll have to clean house himself. Well, there goes a possible problem in the episode. Should have known it wasn't going to be that easy for all of them to be on the football team. Spencer and Jordan talking briefly about what Dr. Gutenberg said, and Spencer let Jordan know he left Coach Kenny a message about it and hopes he has a plan. Jordan said, look at Spencer not saving the world. Spencer let him know Dr. Spears said he has to chill on that, so he's trying. I know that's right, because he was trying to help each and everybody. It's nothing wrong with helping people, but sometimes you gotta let them help themselves. That's when Jordan said he had to go somewhere with Olivia, and he asked Spencer was he going to the war ceremony, and Spencer thought it was a family-only invite. Plus, he got a date with Alicia, which she will find out about the war ceremony later. He said he didn't know how Alicia would feel if he rescheduled a date for Olivia, and Jordan said he's right, but we all know he would be invited, but he's also right. He's spending time with Alicia. How would that sound if he rescheduled for someone he used to date? That would be a little awkward. Sal came over and asked Spencer who was that man he was talking to earlier. Spencer let him know and Sal said he probably was wondering where his five-star recruits was at. Spencer told him not to worry about it. Dr. Gutenberg doesn't understand football. Once he said that, Sal brought up that he's training Marco and he's in town. That was a player that Spencer was trying to sign in GAU. Spencer thought he was in Florida, but Sal let him know he's in town for spring break. 
And it doesn't sound like he's having a good time in Florida. He's going to be training him at GAU, and it might be good for him to see some familiar faces. And Spencer said he's going to be stopping by. We already know what time it is. He's probably having problems at his new college, and we can expect him to join GAU. At the studio, Layla's preparing patience for the interview, and you could tell she's still struggling with the whole patience 2.0 thing. Layla was trying to make sure she was good, but instead of saying something, she said they should move forward. That was her chance to say something. It's been bothering her these past episodes. Patience was wondering what was going on with Layla's phone. She told her it was her calendar. She has a lot of things to do. Layla was going to cancel brunch with her dad because the interviewer had changed the time, but Patience told her to go. She can handle it. Next scene, Jordan took Olivia to a dance class. He said dance was her first language. It's how she expressed herself, so he figured why not take her back to her roots. She questioned how could that help her with her speech. Jordan let her know when he stuck with football or life, he plays video games. That's his outlet. Maybe dance could be that for her again. She was trying to leave and play video games, but he told her he already paid $30 for the class. She told him they aren't even properly dressed for the class, but he had the clothes in his bag. That was a smart move by Jordan picking a dance class, something that she used to enjoy doing a lot, which could help her currently what she's doing right now. Layla's at the cafe with her dad catching up. He tells her he likes the idea of her combining the names for her label. He was checking to see if things are good on her end, and she told him it's going good. She did let him know she might have to cut the brunch short because she has some stuff to take care of. Her dad said he kind of misses the hustle, and she said he should join her. There's plenty of that, and he said he would. That was nice of him to offer to help out, and they make a good team. Back at the dance studio, they split into groups, and that dude Jordan wasn't doing too bad at dancing. I thought he was going to do bad, and it was going to be funny, but he kept up. Then it was Olivia's turn, and she was doing good at first until the instructor told someone she messed up a little and that they always move forward no matter what. We find out later it was something similar that Billy would say. So she ended up leaving and Jordan was wondering what was going on. I don't blame him. He paid 30 plus dollars for that class. Over at GAU, Marco and Spencer are having a conversation. He asked him about Florida and Marco said it's chill, a lot of moving parts, but he can handle it. Spencer told him if he needs someone to talk to, he's there. Marco tells him that his college found out that he was gay. Spencer said it ain't like that was a secret. He was talking about his partner while he was visiting in GAU. Marco told him that they want to do a whole out athletic campaign. He doesn't mind who he is, but he didn't sign up to be the face of it. Some of his teammates think he's getting special treatment. He just wants to train in peace, which is why he came back for spring break. And Spencer says since he wants peace, he can run football drills with them later. Marco thought that their coach may have something to say about that. And Spencer let him know that they are running voluntary student led practices for the next two days. So it looks like he's going to be joining them for the practices. That was cool of Spencer, and that was wild for his college to try and do that. Marco just wants to have fun playing football with all the extra stuff going on around him. Sky showed up to the studio, and the conversation got a little personal. Patience asked how Coop was doing, and she said she doesn't know. Patience sees her more than she does. Sky apologized and said she doesn't want to involve her ex, and Patience said she doesn't want to be involved. Sky said they're friends, right, and told her that her and Coop are on a break, but they haven't had time or space to define that either. Then changed the subject to focus on the interview. Not gonna front, that was kind of awkward. To almost involve Patience into their relationship, and also something else is gonna happen later. Olivia and Jordan get back to the house, and he asked her what happened and she said she just wanted to finish her speech but the real reason was what the teacher said earlier move forward no matter what their dad used to say the exact same thing to her jordan figured it was something related to their dad because he always brought her to her dance class and he just wanted her to get out of her head and she did she said before she walked out of class and he let her know she did a good job jordan said watching her during the freestyle segment it reminded him of what her true first language was letting go and speaking from the heart script free that's what live the truth is after all that's true her writing those speeches it isn't really helping and she should just speak from the heart and just say how she really feels. Back at GAU, Spencer, Sal, and Kyle are discussing Marco's situation. They don't like what the college is trying to do with him, and Spencer brings up why he didn't commit to Texas Northern Tech. They tried to paint him as some gangbanger bad boy on and off the field. Man, Kai and Sal was laughing at him. Kai said, had they met him? No shade, but he's about the least bad boy brother he knows. I don't blame him for laughing at Spencer. Spencer gonna say he got his moments. Man, all you did was get into some fights and punch a cabinet. Sal said, Said they may not know what Marco is going through, but he should be the one to be able to control his narrative. He just wishes he could find a way to do that and focus on the game. After hearing all of that, Spencer looks like he's about to come up with a plan. Denise and Alicia are at the house trying to figure things out for the room, and Grace tells them that she can't do it. Spencer has so many changes in his life, she wants to respect the memories that he's holding on to. Plus, she should be getting ready for Olivia's award ceremony. 
She asked Alicia what time her and Spencer are getting there. She said she doesn't know. Spencer's driving. Grace, now you know. Well, maybe she didn't know, but she should know that they was not planning on going to that at first. I think he would have brought that up in the morning before the whole room thing. Layla and her dad are at the baker's house. He notices that there are some past due song royalties. Layla mentioned that her accountant said if it goes past a few days, it's just a small fee. He told her it's not always about the fee. Sometimes it's about the people. Some of the artists account on those royalty checks. That's right. They want their money. They probably over there checking the calendar trying to make sure that it's the right date for their money to come in. Layla tells him it's like one part of the job she doesn't enjoy and unlike her dad, she doesn't have a whole department. JP told her until she gets people to handle it, she's gonna have to learn to love it and do it herself. She said it's easier said than done. So he went into his bag and got his laptop and showed her a program her mom made when Keating Records first started. Layla's dad gave her one more piece of advice. Her busy schedule earlier looks like it's all centered around work and she knows better than anybody that he built this company at a cost to her and her mom. Time is fleeting. She should find a way to make room for things that matter to her outside of work. And try to find that balance, just like we seen earlier. Jordan was trying to spend time with her and she's gonna be missing Olivia's award ceremony. Before practice, Spencer's having a talk with Marco. Spencer told him a wise athlete helped him with his own identity crisis. He made him realize he needed to define Spencer James on his own terms. Marco said he knows who he is. Spencer said he doesn't doubt it, but say it out loud. He hands him a phone to record it for nobody except for him. So when he's on the football field getting pulled in directions he doesn't want to go to, he can be reminded of who he is and why he's there. He can listen to it to recenter himself and get back to work. Marco called it corny and Spencer said is he calling him corny he records it and said what he wanted to say that was a good one by Spencer to help him out which it seems like even more Marco will be transferring back to GAU Olivia goes into the kitchen and she sees her mom with some makeup Laura told her that she's gonna focus on her words and they're gonna help her get her look together Olivia was happy but not about Jordan helping out with her look she asked him if he had practice he told her it's voluntary so he can stay she let him know that he's done more than enough and thanked him for everything also she most likely didn't want him anywhere near her with anything that has to deal with makeup. Patience is doing an interview and you could tell she doesn't even look like she wants to do the interview. The interviewer showed her that her fans are using the filters that her team put together with their pictures, making them feel a little more confident and that probably bothered her a little because she most likely would want them to be themselves. When she said they're going bigger and flashier with Patience 2.0, he wanted to quote her on that. She said she wanted to stay on topic with the tour and he said they are. He was glad that the girl next door, Patience, was out and Patience 2.0 is in. That didn't help her any, and Sky was noticing how she was reacting during the whole interview. I think the interviewer could have picked up a little bit better on how Patience was reacting, and also Patience should have spoke up to Layla earlier. She had the opportunity to say something that she didn't. Yeah, Layla put a good amount of time and money into the new Patience, but at the end of the day, she wants her artist to be good, because if the artist isn't good, neither will the music. She has to be comfortable with who she is, and at the same time, it's also not bad to change stuff up here and there. At the practice, Marco said the squad seems like a good one. Spencer said they might be scrappy, but never underestimate the hunger and the underdog with something to prove. I hope eventually, whenever they start to be able to play football again, we see some more games. They talking about how good this squad is. Marco said their administration got to be excited for their next season, and Spencer isn't sure about that. He said the recruits may not be flashy enough for the president of GAU. Marco told him flashy doesn't guarantee wins. Jordan chimed in and said, try telling that to someone who only cares about press and boosters. They're not wrong. You can have a flashy football team, but that doesn't mean they all play well together and get wins. They have to put together a team that works well together, well-known players or not. Scott told Patience that the article will be published in a special artist edition within a week, and she tried to act like she was happy, and Sky asked her what's going on. Patience told her she misses her indie sound. It was her, grounded in something real, and the Fire and Ice 2.0 isn't it. She doesn't want to project a message that people need to change themselves to feel better. She just wants them to know that their true identities are equally as fierce, and she can't do that if she's not being her. Sky asked her how would the old Patience remaster Fire and Ice, and she got her guitar and started singing, and it sounded good. Guess she will be having that talk with Layla later after all. Spencer gets back home, and he was wondering what they were going to be doing for their date night, which led to her bringing up they're going to be going to Olivia's award ceremony that she heard from his mom. He let her know he wasn't hiding anything and he wasn't planning on going because he thought it was a family thing and he knew they had a date night. Plus, wouldn't things be awkward with her and Olivia together? And she disagreed. Alicia let him know that she's the reason they're back together. Olivia's the reason she came back that night. At that point, Spencer looked like he was thinking about something. When you hear the only reason she came back was because of Olivia had a talk with her, it doesn't really sound like she wanted to come back herself. 
I get it, she was giving them space, but without Olivia, it seems like she wouldn't have gone back. At the awards ceremony, Olivia's nervous. Laura told her her writing the article was the hardest part. Now she can just enjoy being celebrated. Then Jordan spotted John Sally. I was not expecting him to pop up. He does pretty good in his acting roles, and it's funny because I was just watching Malcolm and Eddie the other day. After seeing him, Olivia felt a little more pressure. She said, who's next, Michael Jordan? And Jordan said, better, hopefully. It was Spencer and Alicia that showed up. Olivia thought they weren't gonna make it, but Alicia said they couldn't miss cheering her on. Jordan told Spencer that John Sally was there, and Spencer joked to Olivia saying, no pressure, Olivia. Before Layla goes to the award ceremony, she stops by the studio to talk to Patience, and Patience told her she's been struggling with fire and ice and a persona that they built. Layla says she knows, she can tell, but after the tour, they can redefine who she is. Patience let her know she doesn't want to refine who she is, and she knows who she is. She thinks she found a solution to move forward with just a slight tweak. She told Layla same album and same songs, just with an acoustic flair and her on stage with her guitar. Patience played her version of the song and Layla liked it. She let Layla know she knows it's going to affect the tour, but she's down to work overtime. And Sky agreed too, even if it'll be triple overtime for her. Layla says she doesn't care how much work it takes. That's the real Patience. And between everything that happened, that's the happiest she heard her sound. Patience asked, are they really changing it up? And Layla said they are. Gia might flip, but everything should be good. Plus, Layla's glad to cancel some meetings that she had for the next day. See, that's all she had to do was speak up and let everyone know how she felt, which could have helped her out before. But the point is, she got there now. Back at the award ceremony, like usual, Spencer and Olivia are having their talk. He told her her showing up, owning who she is, that takes guts. And him and Jordan meant what they said with supporting her. And in terms of protection, she knows she got the vortex. Ain't nobody messing with them. We did see the camera pan to Alicia after Grace walked over to talk to Spencer and Olivia. Not sure what that meant. Maybe she's thinking about all that's going on. Grace was going to talk about the room situation, but Spencer seen that the award ceremony was about to start. John Sally gave a speech and he announced who won the award, which was Olivia. Olivia was so surprised she couldn't even move, but Layla showed up and she helped her get up. She gave an emotional speech and dedicated the award to Billy. She also said he's a change maker himself, a man that they can only aspire to be. That was a good moment and it was nice of her to dedicate that award to her dad. After the speech, Spencer and Olivia are talking again. He lets her know that he's proud of her. And she asked him, how does he put one foot in front of the other after losing both Corey and her dad? She wants to keep honoring her dad every day and was wondering how. Spencer told her by learning to live in the now. That's what her pops would have wanted for them. They had to learn the hard way that they only got a small window. Tomorrow ain't promised, so embrace what's in front of her. Also, Billy would have wanted her to live out her wildest dreams, both in her career and life. He is right, though. That's what Billy would have wanted for them. Keep going forward and follow their dreams. Olivia said she can't say she's been doing that. She's a freshman college student who's been focused on her job off campus, and she doesn't even know where the commissary's at. Spencer let her know their freshman year isn't over and that she should go after the life that she wants. They make it back to the Baker's house and Spencer and Grace are talking about his room. He let her know that she did a lot for him and Dylan so that they could have everything that they needed. He should be honoring that by honoring her. Home isn't a place, it's wherever she is. All the crafts room in the world isn't going to change that. It took some time, but he let her know that it's okay for her to have the crafts room. And after everything she went through, plus the WWE wrestling match that was going to happen during breakfast between Spencer and Dylan, I think she deserves it. After that conversation, Spencer got a text about meeting with Dr. Gutenberg, so it's time to see what decision he makes. Jordan finds Layla and they have a quick chat. She was preparing the royalties to send off that her dad noticed she was putting off. Jordan asked her about the UK artist she was going to check out and she said she sent the best A&R consultant to cover for her. He said she hired somebody new and she said he wishes she would. She had sent her dad to go check out the artist. She told Jordan Olivia is important and he is too and since he has some days of spring break left that they take a trip. He thought she was busy and what was going on. She said time is fleeting. That's the tweet. So they good now and she probably gonna start balancing more of her work and personal life. At the studio, Patience told Sky thank you for helping out, and Sky let her know watching her that day reminded her that she needs to always fight for her. And this is when something happened. Sky kissed Patience. Patience didn't like that at all. She got up and left the studio. And remember, Miko bugged her phone and mentioned a video file, so this is gonna pop up again sometime later in one of the episodes. Why didn't Patience listen to Layla and stay away from her? Also, Sky got caught up in the moment. She's having problems with Coop, and doing something that quickly isn't gonna help, and glad Patience got up and left. Spencer meets up with Dr. Gutenberg and he told him no disrespect but their team doesn't need any fixing. They got some players with some baggage but they got something better than any five star recruit can offer. They got heart. Dr. Gutenberg said something that Spencer was not expecting that Marco re-signed to the team and Spencer was confused. He told him that's not true but Marco popped up and said he told Dr. Gutenberg that the roster is full of heart, grit, and dedication. 
He regrets not being a part of it. Spencer asked him, is he joining GAU? And Marco told him he's decommitting from his current team to join GAU's team. Dr. Gutenberg seems good with everything. He knows what he can tell the boosters. Glad everything worked out and it didn't affect the current players. Plus, you could tell Marco was going to rejoin the team on how everything was playing out throughout the episode. At the Baker's house, we see Olivia and Laura putting Billy's jersey on the wall and the award is right next to it on the shelf. Olivia said, now their legacies will always be together, and she will honor that with each step forward, one foot in front of the other, and that's where the episode ends. Overall, cool episode. The football team is good. Olivia got over her fear a little, and she is working on stuff. Patient stories still filled with drama and things to come, and so much more. When it comes to patience, I'm glad she worked everything out, but I thought they were going to go into her story a little bit more with that, with the social media and her just coming back to herself. The party was a good example, but I thought they were going to build it up a little bit more with the social media and her finding herself again, just figuring different things out and then eventually coming to that conclusion. It's still a good way how they handled it, but I kind of thought they were going to handle it like the second part of this season, like what they did with Spencer, Jordan, Olivia, and some of the others. Comment below what did you all think about the episode and what was your favorite part from it. Thank you all for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.